What's up guys, we're back with another Super 7 Ultimus review, jumping back into Conan the Barbarian with what is essentially Wave 2, but it's really just a single figure. We're taking a look at the iconic pose, Conan. So we had Wave 1 that had Conan, Thulsa Doom, uh, Rexor, and Thorgrim, and now we're getting the second Conan figure. And this is, again, iconic pose, so it's where he's holding that sword over his head, training shirtless so it's a very specific thing they're going for uh, this is very reminiscent of wave one when it comes to the packaging so you've got the slip cover uh, on it with the embossed conan the barbarian logo and it's got that sort of faux leather look and feel so it's textured from front to back and then you have uh, the sword embossed on the back as well in that uh, nice foil then of course you know as usual you can pop that slip cover off and we've got the figure there in the window in that trapezoidal style packaging that we're used to by now and then the back of the box has got the wheel on it again and then you've got a biography for Conan himself so let's do it let's pull him out and take a look and here we go out of the package our iconic pose ultimates Conan the Barbarian so this guy is again meant to be a very specific instance of Conan. There's kind of one goal in mind when it comes to this figure, and it's really hitting that iconic pose. And that's that's what he's named after. That's clearly what they want you to do with this guy. Uh, there is some new stuff going on with this figure, though, in terms of articulation, mostly in terms of construction, not necessarily uh, range of motion, but aesthetics and how he's put together. So uh, let's see what he can do, see how he moves around. Uh, to start with, you've got a head that's just on a ball peg, but he is really locked down. Uh, similar to the Wave 1 figures, there's really not a lot of give here. So he can look up like slightly, and I mean super slightly, and then he can look forward. That's about it. He really can't look down. His head's going to bob right back up, and then he can rotate. You do have some tilt side to side, but that's about it. Unfortunately, he really doesn't have too much range at the neck. The arms go out at the shoulders. This is still a very Motu Classic style of figure, so if you're familiar with that, you know what to expect here. They, of course, rotate all the way around. We've got our bicep swivel, single-jointed elbows, but they're pinless now. And, I mean, there's there's the same range. There's really no difference here. Uh, they are essentially the exact same kind of elbow, just without the pins, even down to how the arms are shaped. Uh, so they're not like what we would see on, say, a Mythic Legions figure, for example, that are single-jointed pinless, where they are sort of seamless at the same time. You still have that seam line there, and there is no swivel at the elbow either, where you would often have that on other figures. So it's it's different, but it's still very similar in terms of functionality, I guess is the best way to say it. We've got swivel and rotation uh, at the wrist there. You've got your hinge. We've got an ab crunch. He goes forward, like one click, and then he goes backwards, one, and you've got your waist twist. Legs go out pretty much all the way, almost to full splits. Uh, his legs kick forward about that far. You've kind of got to twist them to get him to go because he's got the like the diaper thing going on here to, to cover that crotch piece. You've got your thigh swivel. We've got single jointed rotating knees. These are again pinless, so you have that uh, very clean look right there, which I do really enjoy and I, I do appreciate that change. And then we've got rocker and hinges down at those ankles. So he is, I mean, he's very similar to Wave 1 Conan figures. He's very similar to the Motu Classic style of figure that this, of course, is still very much built upon. The big difference is, aesthetically, he looks nicer because he doesn't have those pegs uh, on the arms and on the legs. My only real gripe about this figure when it comes to movement is truly going to be the head. I wish he had a little bit more range there overall. It's just, it's just a lot uh, more tightly locked down than I expected. Now, as far as aesthetics go, I think we've got some good and we've got some not so good. There are some definite improvements and changes from the prototype, at least for me, uh, that seem quite different now that I have this in hand. But there are a few things that I think are just kind of misses on this thing as well. He is, again, very much a Motu Classics figure. So you've basically got a He-Man upper body. If you know what's going on with a Motu Classics figure, well, here it is again. There is definitely something going on with the color tones on this figure. He does look in some instances like he is mismatched, but it's a shading thing. And I'm not really sure how well it's gonna come through here on camera, but the arms are a little more heavily shaded than the chest. When you have it out in like a normal situation, you're probably not gonna notice it, but when he's in differing kinds of light, it might be more easy to detect. Uh, when he was sitting on my desk uh, during the workday, for example, I didn't really notice it, but 
in other instances I did. And it just seems like it's a little bit more heavy handed on the arms overall. And there is a little bit of a, of a lack of shading around the collar and maybe a little bit on the pecs. He's got it uh, right in the midsection and all over the abs. I mean, he's even got some of it on his back as well. And the arms are really well shaded. So he's got kind of like a, he's got a tan going basically is what it comes down to. Uh, but your mileage may vary on how much that truly bothers you. Again, in kind of a normal situation, I don't really pick up on it. So it's not much of a big deal for me. As far as the, the pants go, I think they're nicely done. Shading on them is pretty good. He's got a wash. It's kind of an asymmetrical thing as well. So of course it looks normally dirty, I suppose, is the best way to say it. I mean, you don't get dirty uh, the same way on both legs, so he's got some grit and some grime uh, all over him. I will say that one thing that kind of threw me for a loop was the, the crotch piece, which I do think looks a little big uh, because it's that kind of diaper overlay kind of thing, so it's the, the rubbery piece around here that sits over top of the joint work. Uh, but you might, might question whether or not he's actually assembled incorrectly. The belt buckle is on the back side, um, and that's how it's supposed to be. So, you know, don't take that to be a mistake. That is how it's supposed to be. He's just oddly dressed. He's not assembled wrong. He's just oddly dressed. And then you've got the, the furry boots down there uh, at the ankles, which do look really good. The sculpt is nice. Uh, the paint's really good. You've got browns, other browns, more browns, a wash in there. Uh, and it's very much a Conan aesthetic. He doesn't have too much more than that, really, because at this point in the film, there's not go not a lot going on. He's shirtless, and he just has some pants on. Uh, so I think for the most part, they have captured that pretty well. Uh, I do think, overall, the body style suits him. I mean, obviously, He-Man, Conan the Barbarian, uh, works really well together, and this is another instance of the Motu Classics body being implemented on a modern figure and me still enjoying it. And then he's topped off with this head sculpt that definitely has some positives and some negatives for me. The big thing for me that I keep seeing with this guy is that I, I feel like he's a little bit too small when it comes to the head. It looks like it's just a little bit askew. Like it doesn't necessarily match the size of the body. Like this wouldn't go together on a real person. Uh, I do think that the likeness is relatively there, certainly from other angles, but I think one thing that's kind of pulling me back a little bit is the expression. He looks almost sad here rather than sort of I guess determined is a good way to describe it uh, when he's in this moment in the film. Uh, so I think that's a little bit of a loss on this figure where he he doesn't necessarily have the expression that I want him to have. I do think that sculpt is pretty pretty solid. I mean, it's definitely there. I think the likeness is there. Paint is clean and crisp. The five o'clock shadow helps bring it out a bit, but the shiny plastic is definitely a thing with this figure. Uh, it doesn't really bother me all that much, but I do think on the face, it kind of softens him a little bit uh, to its detriment. And then we have what I do think is a pretty solid a hair sculpt to go along with it. Uh, it's nice flowing mane of hair. I mean, obviously it sets the tone for the scene and that's very much uh, what he is experiencing at the time with the wind blowing in his hair as he's, uh, as he's holding that sword. Nice sculpt, good paint applications on the hair. It's uh, got a kind of a multi-layer brown, so it's light, lighter brown. It's not light brown, but lighter brown on top of dark brown, just to bring out that sculpt a little bit more. Uh, so I do think the head sculpt is uh, is kind of a, a toss-up. It depends on on really a few things here. If you think like me, the head is a little small in some respects, that's definitely going to play a factor. But I think the likeness is definitely there. Uh, I just do think that the the plastic, the softness of it a little bit, uh, maybe loses it a touch, and then again. I do think I do think it looks a little small compared to how big this body is. Now, as far as accessories goes, for the most part, I think we have everything we need here. That's not to say that this guy isn't a little light on accessories, though. Uh, I mean, it's an Ultimates figure, but really none of the figures in the Conan line truly have tons of stuff. There's not a lot of things for them because they're all very point-in-time kind of figures. So this is our iconic pose Conan, so he is going to have the stuff essentially, that falls in line uh, with that. So uh, as far as accessories goes, he does have the, the necklace that comes on him in the box. We've got that. We've also got, and this I believe is supposed to be the, the, uh, the pendant that Valeria wears. So the eye of the serpent jewel that gets turned into a, uh, into a necklace for her. Of course, you know, after her time. We do get an extra set of hands, so you get a set of kind of open palm uh, relax hands, and you do want to use at least one of these uh, when you're going to do said iconic pose. And hand swapping is, is very simple on, on this guy. Just pop them in and out, and you've got yourself, uh, you know, a waving hand if you want to do something like that. But we've also, of course, got 
his uh, his sword here, and this is the same sword that we got with the first Conan. So it's the you know the Atlantean sword, and it is still massive. Uh, I don't know if they're going to plan on reducing the size at any point, but this this thing is still really big. Uh, it's it's too big, honestly. It's still oversized. That's not to say I don't like it because I mean the sculpt on on the pommel and the hilt of this sword is is tremendous. It's really well done, and there's tons of tiny detail absolutely crammed into this thing. I mean, it's overloaded with detail at the bottom. Uh, and of course, you know, for our pose, this is important as well. So pop it in the hands. And I will say one thing that I've noticed on this particular figure um, that I recall on the first figures is that they were really hard to get some of those weapons in their hands. I've not had a problem with this one. So it was just super easy just to throw it in there. So let's pull back a little bit. And to actually do this iconic pose, you actually have to turn the arm upside down. So, you know, you'll do something like this and he's got he's got his pose right there. I mean, that's essentially it. That's what that's the goal of this figure. And I think for the most part it accomplishes that uh, pretty well. Honestly, the sword does kind of work here with its length because you can hide the entire sword behind his hand and it does work and that's kind of how it looks in the movie also. So you've got that. And then we've also got one extra head sculpt. So this is one with uh, his flowing locks down and he's got the, the headband on him this time. This is very similar in style to the head sculpt that comes on him in the box. Uh, it's just a little bit different. The expression is slightly changed. They're not exactly the same. I do think that he still uh, kind of holds that sadness in his face a little bit. Something about the way the lips are pursed and then how his uh, his brow is slightly furrowed a little bit. But again, I do think the likeness is relatively there. And just like with the the first head sculpt, that one, uh, they both look tremendously better than the prototype and the Pit Fighter Conan uh, in terms of likeness and just being more Arnold-esque. So while he doesn't come with a ton of stuff, I mean, really, when it comes to being iconic Conan, this is all I really wanted. And uh, we got that and it works well enough. And of course, we get a few extra things on top of it just to kind of sweeten the pot a little bit. And because why not, here is a quick comparison between our new Conan and the previous Conan figures that we got from Super 7. So uh, this is, of course, the comic book Conan, the, the first one that they released, pre-Ultimates, technically. And then this is Wave 1 Pit Fighter Conan. There's not a lot to compare to between these two. I mean, you can see that they are of uh, similar construction, similar build in many ways. And I'm going to pop his crunch out a little bit more. And you can see that we've got our Pit Fighter here, and they are more in line with each other outside of the fact that the middle one uh, now is pinless, of course. But you can also get an idea of just how different the heads are. They look like entirely different people. So uh, I thought that this one was all right at the time. Like, it, it, I could see Arnold in it. But next to this one, it's a night and day difference. So they definitely ratcheted up their, their likeness when it comes to this new sculpt. I think while it's, again, not perfect, Perfect. I do think it is very much more in line with an actual existing human being. And then, of course, you know, this is the comic book one, but just to give you an idea of the evolution of what we've gotten so far. So comic book, wave one, wave two. So overall, this figure has some good and some bad. There are a lot of positives when it comes to just the overall ability to make this iconic pose. It accomplishes that. It gives you the right head sculpt, it gives you the right hands, it gives you the sword, and you can put him in that pose relatively easily. Pretty much no muss, no fuss. I do really like the inclusions of no pins in the arms and legs. It doesn't really add anything in terms of range of motion, but it does add a lot for me personally in terms of aesthetics, because those pins are just very old when it comes to this style of body. I'm glad I don't have to see him on this figure. I wish we didn't have to see him on the first figures. There still, of course, are a few issues with this guy. I think the heads are way too locked down, I think they are uh, smaller than they need to be. Expressions are kind of odd. And then there is some uh, kind of haphazard shading when it comes to the arms and the torso. But otherwise, I am still very happy to add him to the shelf. I'm happy to add him to the collection. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing how this one progresses into Wave 3's Warpaint Conan. So that's going to do it for this look at the Super 7 Ultimate's Conan the Barbarian Iconic Pose Conan. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.